In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of the Angels, Saint Joseph, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So this month, let us think of May as Mary's month, the month of Mary, or Our Lady, Our Mother's month. And then we can think of uh, the natural Mother's Day, which is Sunday week, tomorrow week. But to prepare ourselves to give a gift of love to your mother, may I suggest the following. This month of May, recall the importance and the beauty of the prayer of the Most Holy Rosary, reciting the Hail Mary. We are led to contemplate the mysteries of Jesus, to reflect, that is, on the central moments of his life, so that as for Mary and for Joseph, he may be the centre of our thoughts, our attention and our actions. It would be nice if, especially in this month of May, you would pray together as a family, with your friends in the parish, the Most Holy Rosary. Praying together is a very special moment of making family life and friendship even more stable. Let us learn to pray more in the family and as a family. They weren't the words of Father Andre, they were the words of Pope Francis. Consider also that the first day of May was Saint Joseph and consider also that he was the guardian and continues to be the guardian of the mystical body of the church on earth. Let us consider also that he himself was the one who made work noble. He was entrusted to teaching the trade of carpentry to Jesus, to God himself. And it is in this work which is so important for our daily lives. So there's a message here for young people and those people who are finding difficulty with work. Remember, it is used to sanctify us and it is necessary because we find that the example given to us was by God himself in the person of Jesus. Adolescents and young people, get involved in your daily duty, in study, in work, in friendships, in helping others. Your future depends on your wisdom in leading and living these precious years. Don't be afraid of effort, of sacrifice, and don't look to the future with fear. Keep hope alive, there's always a light on the horizon. And again, that's not Father Andre, I'm just voicing what the Pope himself had said on the feast of Saint Joseph. The power of the rosary we can know through history, but it's a wonderful thing to reflect upon in that famous battle in 1572, the Battle of Lepanto, shows how the odds are stacked against Christendom because Protestantism had already spread and it had weakened the structures of kingdoms so much so that there was only small support from a number of kingdoms around the European Iberian Peninsula and Italy itself and also France where they gathered together small fleets to amass against the great armada of the Ottoman Empire which was coming against Christendom and was going to disrupt the whole of that culture. But it was through the power of the Rosary by Pius V who had asked the whole church to pray the Rosary during those difficult years which brought a tremendous success in what would have been considered an obvious loss because they didn't have the numbers to combat against 
a force which was three times this size. So the ammunition was a rosary, the praying of the rosary, and especially this diabolical situation where Christendom was going to be crushed and they knew what the Moors were going to do, convert or die, so you either apostatized or you were martyred. And how beautiful is that day to be? I understand it's coming very soon for the canonization of 800 Italians who were put to death because they would not resign and sell out their souls to that of taking on Islam. In other words, it goes back, I think the year was 1454, in a place south in Italy where the Moors had come ashore and they obliterated and completely annihilated the Catholics. But now the victory is to all of us to rejoice in heaven because of their flesh being sacrificed for the love of God. But more importantly, I think if we look at another feast day coming up, which is the 24th of this month in May, something particular to Australia because our first church in Sydney in 19 in 1820 was called St Mary's and then the Synod of Bishops, some 12 bishops came together and decided that Australia would embrace Our Lady Help of Christians as their patroness. And that goes on because of a great victory again. It was Napoleon Bonaparte who had advanced through Italy and he was able to do something which the Ottoman Empire hadn't succeeded in he desecrated some 50 churches and he imprisoned two popes, Pius VI and also Pius VII. Pius VI died in prison. Pius VII, he eventually regained the throne, but it was Napoleon Bonaparte who believed that he was invincible and he had been excommunicated because of what he had done to the churches in their desecration and also to inflict upon a pope grievous harm would also bring about an excommunication, which is a canon lord matter. Anyway, he thought, well, what can possibly happen? You've excommunicated me, so what? Well, the result was this, that what he thought, the arms from the the hands of his army would fall did actually happen because when he went to Moscow to conquer the freeze set in and the troops some 900,000 to a million actually froze and the arms did fall from their hands and that was because there was a great rosary crusade going on while Pius VII was in prison he asked that the rosary be said and Christendom pray. So great deluges of evil which permeate through what we now know through the media, where the demonic has entered into the family home through the internet and also through television, DVDs, and also by the behaviour of people who are so-called friends of families, they bring with them these ways in which to corrupt the family if we join together in this month of May where there's particular graces and great beauties given to creation in this month as the softening of colours and also a brightening of colours. There's a, a beautiful, natural, bizarre or tapestry which emphasises the beauty of Our Lady. So use those natural inclinations to draw us to Our Lady whose air we breathe as on a day such as today, so beautiful that it is, that we can think of Our Lady and therefore propagate and pray the rosary at every opportunity. And with that, you'll find that peace will come into your heart and peace will come to the family. One of the things that Jacinta had been saying before she died, and remember Jacinta of Fatima, she was 10 years of age when she died. It was a couple of years after the last of the apparitions in 1917 but she died alone. 
and she willingly took on suffering so also did Francesco in order to bring about the salvation of poor sinners. At the same time, Our Lady had revealed to Jacinta that those who were being killed in the First World War, many of them went to hell. It is also revealed to them, young as they were some two years earlier, that the visions of hell that they saw, they saw many, many falling into hell, so many that you couldn't count them. The numbers are less then, the evils are greater today, so to mention hell is to awaken ourselves of what are we doing? We need to awaken ourselves from the slumber which we're in and there are some natural penances available to us, especially in these cooler mornings when we're inclined to roll over into bed, not get up, when we should be praying the rosary, getting up at a time where we'd stipulated to do it and we've been effective in doing it, perhaps in the summer months, but whether in itself is an opportunity by nature to go against our own natural inclinations of wanting to have sleep and being cosy in bed, start praying the rosary, to go perhaps to bed a little bit earlier, and also to foster some mortifications and sacrifices and think about what luxuries you have, how much heating you have in your homes, how many rooms you need to have heated, and how much money you need to have in the bank, and how many mortgages and debts that you need to enter into to satisfy the flesh and your inclinations to want to keep up with the Joneses. Think of holy poverty. Think of the initial family, which is to be built like the holy family, where poverty was a great treasure. Joseph didn't go for a two-storey mansion. He was just trying to get accommodation for his pregnant mother. He also, to many, wasn't very good with his real estate. He only came up with a stable, and that was to be the accommodation for God, the Son of God, and also for the Mother of God. Makes you think, what are we thinking about? Are we directing those people who we can into thinking about, rather than having four bedrooms, perhaps one bedroom at the moment so that we need, and then extending or building on. I'm saying that because if you go into debt, the wife needs to go into the workplace. The wife goes into the workplace, pregnancy is going to control the money flow. Therefore, with that threat, there will be the inclination to want a contracept, which happens to be the case with 95% of married couples at those early years. One of the other things to consider is to be charitable towards the wicked. They are in ignorant, ignorance, and through prayer and through example, we are able to turn them away perhaps from what their evil inclinations are and turn them back to God and also to be very patient with people. How patient was God with each and every one of us? as we went through some very trying times when we had fallen from grace. And Jacinta also talks about praying for the priests, the governments and religious. And, of course, she talked about the fashions. Our Lady had revealed to her that many were offensive to God. Those who serve God should not follow these fashions, and the Church has no fashions. Our Lord is always the same, bearing in mind this whole issue that I have a sense of what the Church has asked us in regard to fashion. And mothers, pray much for your daughters. Fathers, direct your daughters. They listen to you at a very important time as they become more mature in their maternal and feminine aspects. So in this month of May, firstly, let us thank Our Lady and ask her to enrich our devotion to her son. Let us ask her as 
many of the popes in the last 100 years have been ask us, asking us to do, which is to self-annihilate ourselves, to consecrate ourselves to her. It's a good thing if you can do that each day because all we're doing there is effectively doing what God has asked his son to do, which was to come and dwell amongst us to entrust his only begotten son to Mary, the one who was immaculately conceived. All creation paused when the angels spoke to her, waiting for her yes, and God also waited, and in that yes, we have salvation. So let's do what the Son of God, the invisible word did, by entering into Mary, being conceived by the Holy Spirit, may we also enter in an allergy way, in an allergy way, into the womb of Mary and be fashioned into Christ like the womb of Mary fashioned the word of God in the person of Jesus. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.